Hi, this is Michael Vandenboss. I'm a Vancouver film scholar and film history teacher and an animation history teacher as well. For the past few years, I've been curating and presenting a variety of movie clip show celebrations at the Van City Theatre located at 1181 Seymour Street in Vancouver, British Columbia. It's the home of the Vancouver International Film Festival. My clip shows consist of um, themes based on, um, it could be dance and film, singing and film, uh, jazz performances, rock and roll performances, spooky cinema, uh, romance and film, and so on. And what I do is I curate a selection of clips from usually classic Hollywood movies and I put them into some sort of um, a presentation which then I introduce in blocks of clips at the theater and we then project them on the big screen. Last year I had a big popular show, a sellout called Hollywood Haute Couture, which was all about uh, fashion shows and the fashion industry and classic movies. And it was so popular that I am now putting on or pre preparing a second show called, appropriately, Hollywood Haute Couture Part 2, Filmdom's Phantom Threads. So what I'd like to do in this uh, brief little video is just give you an example of the process in which I actually uh, select these clips. So why don't you come along with me and um, let's look behind the magic, shall we? Yeah. Here's an example of some of the index cards for my current show, Hollywood Haute Couture Part 2. All the clip information that I jot down gets individually noted on index cards in which the uh, basic information of each clip uh, is indicated. So it'll be the title of the film, the year of the film that it was released, um, what the clip is about, uh, directors, stars, if there's a song, if it's a song number, then the uh, song title will be listed. In the case of a fa my fashion clip shows, uh, I will have the uh, fashion designer's names written on it. So all the basic information, including the start and the stop times. Once I figure out the clips for the show, the basic themes and such, of course, a lot of these get uh, tossed out. They get edited out because I have to get a show down to approximately 86 minutes of uh, film clips and uh, approximately 22 to 24 minutes of script or my talk in terms of introducing the films. So it's always interesting to see what eventually gets tossed out. Uh, and here's one good example. Alfred Hitchcock's To Catch a Thief from 1955 starring Grace Kelly and Cary Grant. Costumes by Edith Head. Why did I toss this one out? Well, let's have a look and listen, okay? To Catch a Thief was released in 1955 by Paramount Pictures directed by the great Alfred Hitchcock. It's a very stylish movie shot on the French Riviera. It was photographed in Paramount Pictures' proprietary process called VistaVision, which uh, exposes two 35mm frames at once, uh, creating a large image format and thus uh, capturing so much more uh, intense uh, detail and color saturation. Um, the movie is a Hitchcock souffle. It doesn't have... Um, the psychological depth of something like uh, Rebecca from 1940, um, Shadow of a Doubt from the early 1940s, some of his later pictures such as Rear Window, also starring Grace Kelly, and certainly Vertigo, uh, late 50s, Psycho 1960, and so on. Nevertheless, uh, the uh, To Catch a Thief is a, it's a sparkling uh, Hitchcock picture, but it's filled with um, a lot of his themes, such as mistaken identity, uh, duality of, of uh, personality. Uh, there's also a, a lot of uh, sexual themes uh, throughout the uh, picture itself. Cary Grant plays uh, John Roby, uh, a former jewel thief. He was known as the cat, a cat burglar. And uh, a uh, series of thefts, jewelry sh thefts, occur in the French Riviera. And of course, Roby is uh, accused, he's the prime suspect anyway, uh, of, all the, um, of all the burglaries, if you will. Uh, in the process of trying to clear his name, he meets Grace Kelly, as we see here, who is a uh, very, uh, comes from a wealthy American family. Look at the lighting of this scene here. She's tempting him with his jewelry. And the way Hitchcock and his cinematographer Robert Burks photographs the picture, they do so with the, uh, the full knowledge that uh, uh, logical motivation of light will, mo will 
drive the stylization of the picture itself. So the fashions are very important in the picture, as they always are in Hitchcock films, and the fashions here are by Edith Head. And Grace Kelly is wrapped in this just stunning uh, white gown, uh, strapless, so it emphasizes the jewelry around her neck that she's teasing Roby with. So it's interesting that here she thinks that he is the cat burglar, and she's tempting him to rob her, but there's a sexual theme behind this in that she has a kink, she has a fetish, where this turns her on that he is a criminal, and that uh, to rob her gives her a sexual thrill. So this is typical of Hitchcock, where uh, sex is used as, as, a, as a power, as a weapon, as, um, as a fetish in so many of his pictures. And uh, certainly here, the uh, fashion by Edith Head helps to emphasize not only the sexuality of Grace Kelly, but that gorgeous necklace that she's trying to lure the Cary Grant character towards her. He's attracted to her, of course, and uh, he's going to give in, and why wouldn't you when you've got Grace Kelly wrapped up in a gorgeous Edith Head gown? And this comes into one of the great uh, moments of uh, uh, sexual metaphor in the movies. This must have been uh, pretty racy stuff at the time with Hitchcock intercutting between uh, the lovemaking and the actual fireworks themselves. This uh, was a clip that was potentially going to be in my Hollywood Haute Couture uh, show part one and possibly in part two. But because it wasn't dealing with a, uh, a particular specific fashion show or where fashion is is uh, obviously super integral to the scene itself even though the fashion is important to the psychology of the characters here I just felt it had to go by the wayside but certainly this can be used for a uh, another show um, perhaps a uh, show on Hitchcock and fashion 50 shades of hitch certainly anything that Hitchcock did with sexuality and fetishness and kinkiness in his movies far outstrips anything in the Fifty Shades of Grey movies. That's my opinion anyway. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks very much. <laughs>